episode is sponsored by ODP Business Solutions, built to address all your facility needs. Visit odpbusiness.com today. Restrooms may look the same on the surface, but the smartest ones are quietly transforming how facilities run. This isn't about chasing gadgets. It's about using real-time data to cut waste, reallocate labor, and raise the satisfaction of every person who walks through that restroom door. In today's episode, we're going to break down how to build the right tech stack, weave restroom data into daily workflows, and translate signals into staffing moves that frontline teams actually feel. And to do all this, I have an expert with me today, Callie Folk, the National Director of Hospitality and Cleaning Programs at ESFM. Callie, welcome. Thank you, Jeff. It's nice to be with you today. It's a pleasure. Let's start with an easy one. Tell us about yourself and ESFM. (laughs) Well, my name is Callie Folk. I am our National Director for Cleaning and Hospitality Programs. So by training, I am a cleaning SME. I've been in this industry for about 20 years. Um, But ESFM is a division of Compass Group. And Compass Group, while we are definitely getting into the FM side and we have a robust program, the roots in our culture and hospitality and in food services. So I'm starting to become the conduit between the hospitality services that we're so well known for on our food side and bringing that real spirit of hospitality into our facility side and merging those those two workflows together. That seems to be a smart move. So thank you for what you're doing there. If you're ready, we have a few questions about our subject. Um, the first one is, is what's your elevator speech when it comes to today's topic of smart restrooms? You know, I like that term, smart restroom. <laughs> smart restrooms, tech stacks, and innovation that we need to consider. So talk to our audience about that. Um, so I guess if I was talking about an elevator speech, it would really depend on who's in the elevator with me. Um, so we're a building service contractor and what we consistently have to look at is really how we're bringing value to our clients. So I'm always assessing anything from how does it bring value? We have a lot of different types of clients. So we could have large manufacturing plants or distribution centers, and they could have very different goals um, compared to maybe a class A office space that's looking for something closer to a concierge service. I will say that I truly believe that smart restrooms bring value to both, um, whether it's determining the correct cleaning cadences, ensuring that your product never runs out because nothing makes anyone angrier than using a restroom with no toilet paper or paper towels, Um, really identifying those optimal times. I mean, in a large scale uh, manufacturing site, closing restrooms is a big deal and you really need to know the optimal time to do that So there's value in these programs. And when you run them as a complete program and you combine them with the training and you have really great execution on the management side, it just promotes operational excellence. And again, it brings that value that I'm always looking for. As the modern workplace evolves, organizations must evolve as well. They need a partner that understands this new world of work. We are that partner. We are ODP Business Solutions, formerly Office Depot Business Solutions Division. More than just office supplies, ODP is a force for change, helping address technology transformation, sustainability, innovative workspace design, cleaning, break room, and more. Making organizations everywhere say, oh, when they see how much more we can do. ODP Business Solutions. You know, I think when someone is in a restroom and there's not supplies, they're like, are you kidding me? This is simple. (laughs) stock the restroom but you're, it's the you're, worst it's the absolute worst yeah or overflowing bins or or anything in a restroom but your comment on knowing when to close a restroom because it's not as busy that's genius yeah, <laughs> don't, it's, don't do it it's, it's crucial i mean it, it's crucial to the the consistent operation for a lot of our sites and really employee engagement and morale Nothing nothing is worse than when you're at a huge site, the next restrooms, maybe a tenth of a mile away, and it's closed when you need to use it. Yeah, you'll get your steps in, though. There's that. <laughs> That's never mattered to me when I need to use the restroom. <laughs> Touche. Good point. 
All right. So when you evaluate smart restroom options, what data do you insist on collecting? You talked a little bit about that already, but anything extra besides how busy it is or supplies? No, I mean, I think that there is one really big piece that's consistently overlooked that we always have to be aware of. Um, and it sounds almost cliche, but it, it's probably the entry point to really being able to do a smart restroom and really measuring any impact. And that's a robust inspection program. If you haven't done the, the inspection program and you don't have a consistency and you're not doing them with like quality in mind and you don't have a great baseline already, you don't even know how that impact from a smart restroom investment is going to really make a difference for your restroom cleaning program. If you don't inspect while you're running the program, you don't know how you're measuring the success of it. And if you don't continue to inspect later, you don't know if it's still working for you and for your client any longer. So yeah, sensors are great to talk about. We could talk to, about those ad nauseum. We could talk about thresholds and people counting, but really the ticket to get into any of these programs is a robust inspection program that you can track and you can run data out of. Makes sense. Now I know that the smartest restroom collects a lot of data, a lot of statistics, but tell us this, what are the key metrics that you share with, with stakeholders and what results have you seen by doing that? What we share with stakeholders is dependent on what's really of value to them. Um, so some of the things that we found ha that have really created some of the impact. So when I talk about sensors, what we're really talking about is thresholds, and that's establishing those optimal cleaning frequencies. So for instance, you might have a restroom that gets 5,000 visitors a day and you need to be in it every hour to make an impact and you might have a restroom that has two people a day and just needs that once daily cleaning and doesn't need you to visit it 10 times a day. So it's been um, really impactful with our clients to show that we really are looking at how often cleaning is necessary and we're not cleaning on top of clean and we're also driving impact by increasing frequency where we see it. Um, you know, we've talked about the importance of never running out of product and a lot of our smart restroom systems now, I mean, if you're running out of product and you have a smart restroom in place, it's because you're not paying attention to the data and you're not following the data. So it really does alleviate the chance that you're missing something. Um, the other place that, you know, we've we've really found it and I think where a lot of people are always looking for it and hasn't isn't always the case. But when we're looking to say that the reason that we're not seeing the satisfaction scores for certain restrooms or certain areas at the in the vicinity that we'd like to see them is because we're not cleaning it enough or because we're not hitting the right threshold or because we're closing it at that inopportune time. So it really just allows you to drive the customer experience by making sure that it's always in the condition that the client expects it to be in. I have to think that you must get people coming to you because a facility manager might visit another one and see this and go, oh my goodness, I need that. Has that ever happened? Um, I mean, you see it happen more and more. Mm -hmm. um, especially, you know, still I think that we're still in the early stages of driving value. And when we can prove it, it's powerful. When we can really prove that value of sensor technologies, of making sure that we're, again, we're doing everything on the right cadence, that, you know, staff are trained, they know how to respond, we're decreasing response times. Yeah, there's a sense of, I want that for my site too. And then it's building out the value for that site to make sure that, you know, we're really aligning what the client wants and the client expectations, and we're being good conservators of their dollars. Makes sense. Let's talk about what it takes to drive all this. How do you integrate restroom data with work order systems, robotic schedules, SIMS, GB driven quality programs, so you don't have five different applications? Is there, is it possible to have it all in one dashboard or keep it simple like that? It is, and we have a great tech team that makes all of that happen for us. So for ESFM, it's ESFMX. Um, you know, they 
it, they've been incredible partners um, with our vendor side and pulling in their technologies with the quality side, which would be our centers of excellence, which I sit on um, and making sure that we're driving the quality results that we want to see and that our programs are supported. So we have a whole tech team behind us that's building that one stop dashboard so that you can really monitor your facilities, your smart cleaning, everything all in one one dashboard. It, it's pretty incredible. So I'm a SIM certified expert. I'm getting ready to undergo my recertification here. I think in October, I start the process for December. Um, I will say that SIMS is weaved in every cleaning program that we do, because I know that if I if I don't weave it in early and if I don't get those processes and procedures out into the field and into our accounts, and if it's not built into anything that we do or everything that we do janitorial, it's a lot harder to go back and put the, those aspects back in. So we even have internal certifications and in order to let's say in order to even participate in some of our data or smart cleaning technologies, you have to have those inspection programs that are gonna comply with SIMS. You need to have the paperwork, the duty lists, you need to have all of, all of the individual components already have to be there for SIMS for us to even consider having these types of programs there. So I think the answer might actually be is just SIMS is very ubiquitous in all of our cleaning programs. Uh, so I guess my last question is, did we miss anything? Any final words of advice for those watching? Things that you might share with them to get people to get on board with what they need to do? Well, I mean, realistically, it's kind of like what I said before. So at some point, we do need to earn the credibility and we need to earn I mean, as an industry, it's always having that credibility for our clients. If we want to be something more than just somebody that comes in and, like I said, just cleans once a day, if we want to be seen as industry professionals, you know, if you want to grow your program, if you want to start retaining employees, you know, that the next generations are coming through and they're in their technology. They will, they want to see it. They want to work with it. It's really how it's going to have to grow. Be an adopter, start looking at these things early, start finding out how they're of value to you, your career, find out how they're of value to your clients. Um, you, you don't necessarily wanna get left behind the eight ball when really what we're trying to do now is create something really great and really move all of our cleaning programs forward.